Have you wondered what the main reason is that makes Sora so good at generating videos? What ingredient is added to the base diffusion model that has taken video generation to a whole new level, setting the scene for unlimited creativity? Let's find out. OpenAI announced the development of their text-to-video model Sora on the 15th of February. We all watched how a simple prompt such as this was translated into this realistic video. Sora's development owes to the diffusion model. The diffusion process involves starting with the initial data and progressively disturbing it with intensifying random noise, then successively removing the noise to generate new data samples. In the denoising step, some models estimate a score function, which is a gradient pointing to the directions of data with higher likelihood and less noise. Diffusion models are a family of probabilistic generative models that progressively destruct data by injecting Gaussian noise and then learn to reverse this process for sample generation. Three trends emerge from diffusion models, each tackling the diffusion process differently. Denoising diffusion probabilistic models or DDPMs, score-based generative models or SGMs, and stochastic differential equations or score SEs. Even though diffusion models can be directly used in image generation, natural language processing, temporal data modeling, and computer vision, researchers have noticed that the best results are achieved when diffusion models are combined with other deep generative models, such as variational autoencoders, generative adversarial networks, and autoregressive models, just to name a few. OpenAI being at the forefront of these research studies has decided to do exactly the same, combining the diffusion model with the transformer architecture to enhance the capabilities of both image and video generation. I have simplified the transformer language model in this video, so if you have not watched it, make sure to do so. And at the end of this video, I will tell you why the name is Sora. Now back at this interesting combination. Diffusion transformers. By combining the diffusion model which work through noisy data to obtain clean new data and transformers which are known to be great at scaling sequence lengths, Sora can generate videos and scale them with different resolutions, aspect ratios, and durations. Genius, right? Now, before I get into the nits and grits of Sora's video generation model, I have to touch on two important concepts, conditioning and visual patches. The first one brings us to the distinction between unconditional and conditional diffusion models. Unconditional generation is often used to explore the upper limit of the performance of the generative model, while conditional generation enables us to control the generation results according to our objective, for example, based on the intended content or application. Conditions can range from labels, classifiers, and text to image and semantic maps. In the case of Sora, this conditioning information can be a user's text prompt. We get to it again, but now the second important concept, visual patches. If you've watched my previous LLM videos, you know the concept of a sequence of data. For example, a sentence which is comprised of a sequence of words, punctuations, and symbols. In language modeling, these are considered as tokens or discrete units of information that can be processed both individually and as part of a sequence. Instead of tokens, continuous visual data like a video can be broken down into visual patches, just like the concept of pixels in an image. Sora uses a sequence of visual patches instead of an entire video as the training data for its generative model. To do this, Sora first compresses the videos into latent spaces. Think of latent spaces as the data with the underlying structure and variation of that video, and then decomposes these latent spaces into patches. A decoder maps these latent spaces back to the pixel space. The model then takes control of the final size of the generated video. In doing so, it can take a text prompt as the condition, find the closest relevant elements, select a sequence of visual data from those parts, break them down to visual patches, uses the diffusion process to add random noise and then denoise it while embedding the prompt, pass the visual data to the decoder to generate a new sample, scale it as per the prompt using the transformer part of the model, and generate the final video as a normal pixel-based video as we know. 
This is obviously a super simplified version of the process. Whereas traditional diffusion models use unit convolutional design, the latent diffusion models or LDMs use transformers, more specifically vision transformers, which have been shown to scale more effectively for visual recognition than traditional convolutional networks. Whereas in language models, transformers predict the next word in a sequence of words, in vision transformers, they predict the next pixel autoregressively. As such, in a conditional latent diffusion transformer model, the input latent is decomposed into patches and processed by a diffusion transformer block for conditioning. This could be a block with adaptive layer norm or a block with cross attention or a block with in-context conditioning. Because Sora trains on videos at their native aspect ratios, the model can first prototype a video at a lower size and then generate it at full resolution as per the prompt, instead of a fixed size arbitrary video generation used in other generative models. The problem with other models is that because they train videos on a fixed size and shape, for example, cropping them as square, when generating a new video with different aspect ratios, the subject of the video is also cropped and is only partially in view. Sora, on the other hand, trains the videos on native aspect ratios, so it can generate videos with better composition and framing for any devices. What's more, Sora has also trained a caption model, which can produce highly descriptive captions for the generated videos. This caption model, which is initially used in the DALL-E 3 model, is very similar to the traditional language models, which predict the next token. Sora's captioning model works well for simple as well as highly descriptive text. The more descriptive and complex captions are used by Sora to generate higher quality videos for longer and more detailed user prompts. Sora's text-to-video model has a ton of other features too. Look at this looping video where Sora extends the duration of a fixed size biking video and even extends the video forwards or backwards in time. Animating static images is not new, but it's more seamless with Sora now. But perhaps the most exciting feature is the latent interpolation between concepts or subjects. For example, generating a video by combining the features of two disjunct videos with different themes and compositions. With all these eye-catching features, one can only imagine how this model could be potentially used to generate fake videos for financial fraud or even to cause political unrest. To prevent this, OpenAI has decided to generate videos with watermarks and include C2PA metadata. Here I must mention that, as you can see in these somewhat entertaining failed images and videos, despite all the jaw-dropping improvements to caption, image, and video generation capabilities, in these early stages the model sometimes fails to accurately generate an image or video based on the user's prompt. In their Dolly 3 article, the authors mentioned that it might be caused by the T5 text encoder that maps the whole words to letters in an image. So when the words have missing or extra characters, this would cause issues. If you have watched it so far, you're still waiting to know why the name is Sora. OpenAI decided to name it after the Japanese word for sky to signify its limitless creative potential.